we shall begin today with a cat who is probably going to bump you over. Move, cat. Move, please. Recording in progress. Anyways. Hello, I'm Kendra, and here at Hook by Happenstance, it is time for Makes Monday episode number 35-ish? 35, I think. Anyways, episode scattered. So today we shall begin by discussing our word of the day. So the word scattered, look my computer, is an adjective according to dictionary.com, meaning distributed or occurring at widely spaced and usually irregular intervals, as in scattered villages, scattered showers. The second definition is dispersed or disorganized, such as scattered forces. The third is distracted or disorganized, as in scattered thoughts. And the fourth is, as in meteorology, of clouds, meaning covering up to one half of the sky, which is very interesting to know that there is, I mean, I knew there was a meteorological definition to what makes it scattered clouds, but if they are covering up to one half of the sky, that is scattered. It can also be compared to broken, which is another definition in meteorology as far as clouds, which that's an interesting little rabbit trail if you want to follow it. The clouds do look a bit like rabbits, but they're also full of interesting things. And this is just proof of how scattered my brain is. So I make no promises once again this week that this is going to be, um, I don't know. It's probably going to be disjointed. I'm probably going to lose my train of thought. Just get on board with me and we're just going to figure out where we end up. Once again, for those of you who have not seen any of my recent episodes, um, of which there have not been quite as many as usual, reason being my mom died in February. And so leading up to that, there were some changes in my schedule and such and visiting family and just general stress. And obviously the aftermath of that uh, event has also been very trying and difficult for me. And my brain is a little bit like ah, all over the place because we also um, went immediately after her death out to California. And then we spent three weeks there between then and her celebration of life. Um, with my dad. So three kids and me and my husband at a house that is not our own for a long period of time during a great deal of emotion. It's been a it's been a very very interesting time lately. I have gotten some crafting done though. Um, I don't know if it's as much as usual. It's been I guess different than usual um, and it's been more in the as scattered states uh, distributed or occurring at widely spaced or usually irregular intervals. Like there's been a lot of crafting in varying like pockets of time and then much more space between. Ordinarily it's kind of sprinkled throughout my day every day and that has not been the case the last little while. But home now, things are normal adjacent. So yeah, but I'm still like, whew, super scattered. So let's uh, look at what I got done in my scattered state, shall we? So I have three and a half things off my hook. We'll discuss that in a minute. So the first thing off my hook is this here. This is the sidewalk shawl. It is a free pattern through the Red Heart website. And I have actually, this is the third one I have made. I've made two of them previously in Lion Brand Heartland. This is made out of a Karen Big Cake and I want to say Blueberry Tort. I said it in the last episode. And I don't remember which project bag has the ball band in it anymore. So I'm going to go with Blueberry Tort. So here it is. I got the yarn while I was in California because I actually ran out of my supplies. I brought what I thought was plenty of projects and then I quickly used them all up. So what do you know? President's Day sales means yarn shopping. And I also found when I was at Michael's, which I don't usually have access to, that they had all these Karen Big Cakes and they were on clearance. So, so I believe I got this for $4. I think that's right. Or thereabouts, which I thought was reasonable. And I had been working on it in the hopes of finishing it so that I could wear it to my mom's celebration of life to go with my Moo Moo. And I did complete it and I did wear it. And it was just the right amount of warmth I needed all day because it was cool-ish. And my Moo Moo obviously has like short little cap sleeves. And I just needed a little, a little something extra. So I wore this and it was colorful as was my Moo Moo. And yeah, so 
here we go. That is that on the sidewalk shawl. I highly recommend this pattern, by the way. There is one row of the repeat. I can't remember which number I would tell you. There's one row, though, that I always have to look at and, like, say out loud while I do it. Because since these have pineapples in them, um, if you do some of the rows wrong, it will set you up very poorly for subsequent rows. So just, you will figure it out if you do this pattern. If you get to a part where there's like a little roadblock, put a little star next to that one. And every time you get to that in the pattern, like say what you're doing out loud and then you'll be fine. Or at least I, I was when I did that. Okay, so the next thing off my hook is intended for a crochet along, craft along, whatever. But I honestly don't know that I'm gonna take pictures and get it posted. I just probably won't, but I finished them. So here we go. This is the Oakwood socks out of Ron Strong's Step Into Crochet book. It is the third pair of socks I've made out of that book. And it is made out of Lion Brand Sockies in whatever this green color is. And I used a D hook. I won this yarn in a crochet along a couple years ago. And I've tried using it for several things and it keeps not working out. And then the Yarn Around the World group, which is the VKN I frequent, um, was doing a field of clover craft along thing for St. Patrick's Day. And I thought green socks seems just like they fit the bill. So I started working on these and um, I spent a lot of time working on them while I was in California and then I finished them up once I got home. I used basically all the yarn I had but inches. I worked from one skein of yarn, one from the inside, one from the outside. That way I could just make the legs as long as possible so I could use up all the yarn because I didn't want to waste any. So I'm happy with how they turned out. They're a little snug on my feet. I was not so happy. The book says in the beginning instructions that because of the stretch of this particular stitch that is used, that gives it this pattern, it suggests that you go down a size. So it gives you like three widths around your foot for each of these sock sizes. And I've been veering toward the largest one because the circumference of my foot well, not overly large. I like my socks to not be super tight. Um, it actually hurts my toes. And anyways, I just, I like a loose-ish sock, but that still fits within my foot length. So I decided to follow the instructions. Never follow the instructions. <laughs> well, follow them sometimes. But in this case, I should not have. I should have made the wider ones. I actually think I enjoyed making this pattern that I will probably make a pair of these in the future. I would like to make everything in the book first. That is my socks. The third thing that I have completed was another skein of yarn that I bought while I was in California after I ran out of yarn. And this is loops and threads Barcelona and I believe this is the color tort again I don't remember which bag has the ball bands in them but I want to say it's tort because both of them had the tort name in them I talked about the exact names last week if you are interested or last podcast so the uh the pattern for this is called the women's slouchy cable hat by Jenny Katavu c-a-t-a-v-u you can find it on Ravelry. It is a free pattern. It will take you to a blog post. And I picked it because I wanted a simple hat, but I wanted a little something special around the brim. And I really like how this cable turned out. And I was a little worried that it got lost in the colors till I wore it the other day. And when I was daily blogging, just like the way the camera would catch the cable made me so happy in the video. So I, I like it because it's just a little something. It's not like, hello, I'm a big pattern. But when it catches your eye, you're like, hey, someone did something special there. This hat is designed to have buttons to cover the, uh, the seam. I just left that out because you really can't see it. And I usually just put that part toward the back of my head. And if you're close enough to see it, you're too close to my head. I also made another um, change in the pattern. You're just supposed to work double crochets through the patterning, but I wanted more texture. So I alternated front and back loop double crochet in all the rows, including through the decreases. So even in the decrease rows, I textured the whole thing. And then I was real careful. The top has one of those closures where you, um, you decrease to a certain point and then you just sew it shut. Well, I was real careful how I did that because you can wear this hat two different ways. So 
the first way is like this and it's like super slouchy and I like it and it's fun and I think it would uh be good with multiple different hair lengths that I sometimes end up with so I like that alternatively we could take it off and pull it inside out as far as the hat portions concerned but leave the band right side out and wear it like this which is more like a slouchy just like a slouchy kind of beanie style and when you do this it is doubled around your ears and it's so warm and toasty so it kind of gives me two hats for the effort of one and I am a big fan of that um other information oh I used an H hook for this I enjoyed it I know that some people really like the Barcelona yarn. There's nothing wrong with it, but it also was not, I mean, it was fine to work with. I'd say that about it. The Barcelona yarn was fine. There was nothing wrong with it, but there was also nothing super great about it. It just kind of was all right. And I kind of felt the same way about the color. It's, it's fine. So just to uh, file that. Oh, when it comes to the Karen Big Cake for this shawl, let's talk about that. <laughs> Um, I forgot. So it, uh, it was being clearanced and I'm hoping it was being clearanced because, oh my goodness, the knots. I took pictures of all of them. I think there were eight knots in this skein between, there were like two that were full on knots of the whole yarn. No. Yeah, there were two that were full on whole knots and then there were like four that were just one ply that was knotted and but the knots were really poorly done and it just was not good so if you look real close which again if you're looking that close you're too close to me please step away you will notice that like in here there's like this one weird like kind of shorty stripe that's in there and it's because of the knots and the colors just aren't quite evenly distributed I mean you'll never really notice when I'm wearing it but it was annoying slash comical as I was working with it because we were watching a movie with my dad and I kept stopping to clip things out and take pictures with my phone. And it was just, it was getting funny every time there was another knot. It, yeah, funny and frustrating. But that is just something that I meant to say, but it happened like weeks ago now. But worth noting, I'm hoping that's why it was on clearance. I don't know. So now on to the fourth thing that is off my hook, but is not done. So this week I spent some time working on another sock. I started the Mordecai sock out of the Step Into Crochet book by Ron Strong. And it has this cabling up the ankle. It's worked top down. And I was using this uh, Red Heart Heart and Soul with aloe in the color Green Envy. I really like the color. But I am not enjoying it all the way the sock is working up. So here is the sock. I talked about this in my Sunday Sunrise yesterday, so you may have already heard it. But I have no problem with the yarn and actually how it's working up. Now in the pictures, it was a solid, so maybe that's the difference. But I tried on this little bit, and I don't really like the way it feels on my leg. And I kind of think it's really ugly. <laughs> I thought it was cute in the book, ugly in person. So it is coming off my hook because I am literally going to just frog it and be done with it. Make a little note that um, I didn't like the sock and I gave it a go and be okay with that. So it is coming off my hook by way of frogging. Now on to the things that are on my hook. Obviously my on the hook list is very, very large, but there are only three things that I actually worked on besides those socks. Um, the first that we will talk about is a new design that I'm working on. So this is an as yet named prairie shawl is what I'm calling it for now. Um, ultimately this pattern will probably be available to the public. So I'm not going to tell you a lot about it because it's probably going to be a paid for pattern when it's done. But I... I live in Kansas on a farm and so I can see prairie out my windows because most of my windows don't really have window coverings in them and so twice this week I have woken up from a nap in my recliner looked out my window and seen the color progression from the ground of my house up to the sky and there's multiple like layers of color 
And it just keeps reminding me that I have been thinking and thinking on this prairie color progression for a long time. There's actually a couple of them, so this might become a series. We'll see. But um, the current, like, bleak winter color progression has just been, like, standing out in my head. So I decided to finally do something about it. Went through my yarn stash, pulled out a number of yarns and um, kind of to match the things I was looking for and I started. So I am two colors into what is going to be a multicolored shawl and here is my my current progress. I am happy with how it's turning out. So you'll see this more as I'm working through it and then we'll talk about it when it's all done. But this is kind of my come on just do the thing and get it out of your brain project for the week. And it's the thing that has involved um, creativity. So when I feel like I have that in me, this is what I'm working on. And when I don't, I am working on two graduation afghans. So I have two sisters. Each of them has a son who is graduating this year on June 7th. Yes. So that means that I have two graduation afghans that need to be completed because, silly me, I started a tradition when my niece graduated from high school of making them afghans when they graduate. I made one for her and then I made one for my sister's oldest son and now the next two graduations are happening. They just happen to be in the same year so that's a two afghan year. So the first one that I worked on this week, I actually got a decent amount of love, is Based on the ombre arrows pattern from Moogly Blog, I am making currently a queen size afghan. I might change my mind. We'll see. I picked the queen size because it provides me an opportunity to bail out if I feel like it's big enough and or I run out of time because the dimension width wise could be traded for a different size and use that dimension as the length so that the stripes would run the other way. But we'll see. For right now, I am aiming for the full thing, but I might just decide that that is too much afghan for him. Um, but he's tall, so I really wanted to make sure that it was big enough. So here is what it looks like right now. So much afghan, huh? That's what a queen size looks like. So. This is made out of Red Heart Super Saver. I was going to use um, a nicer yarn. Um, not that I dislike Super Saver at all, but I was just going to because um, I thought they were going to be on sale when I went to buy this stuff. Because I also bought this yarn while I was in California. But they, uh, they weren't that day. But Super Saver was. And Super Saver was available in the colors I was interested in, whereas the other yarn was not. So... The, uh, the way the pattern works is it's alternating um, a shade of the red and then a sh the gray, red, gray, red, gray. So the darkest red is the color Claret, which I really, really love this tone. And I love every variegated color that um, Bret Hart has that has the Claret in it. It's just so beautiful. The next color is burgundy, and then we have cherry red. I've been working on that using a K hook, and like I said, you can find the Ombre Arrows Afghan pattern on Moogly Blog, free, and it's been very nice. So, I just need to keep chugging along on that. It's like I go in little spurts. This is one of those things where I'll sit down with and I'll work on for a little while, and then I will tire of it, and it will just sit there for days. I just need to make sure that those days don't become weeks because I'm running out of weeks between now and June 7th. Okay, the other afghan, which I had not actually touched for a while until last night, is the Tides of Change by Frank O. Randall. And it is also a free pattern on Ravelry. And here is where I'm at. Both of these are using a K-hook. This is in Red Heart Soft, and it's like a mandala style, and it has really good instructions. I've been really happy, especially for being a free pattern in the round. Sometimes I find those can be a little wonky, but this has been easy to follow and fun to make. So I'll tell you real quick what the colors are. So the darkest one is obviously black. And then I have a navy blue. Next up, we have 
uh, royal blue. Then there is charcoal. And finally, the lightest color is light gray heather. The way I figured out the color progression, I think I mentioned this before, but I'll talk about it anyways. I laid out the balls of yarn, I took a picture, and then I grayscaled it. And then I used those to find the color values, just so I could do darkest to lightest on how it read in a black and white photo. And I think, I'm, I'm just really liking how it's turning out. So I've been kind of making some percentage goals along the way on these based on row and or round numbers just to give me like an arbitrary goal to help me have some benchmarks so that I will keep keep working on them otherwise these are afghans are a really easy project to stick in a bag and have disappear because you know you just don't want to deal with them I will try to remember to put progress keepers in those so you can see my progress however I'm like out of stitch markers which I was thinking, oh, I should make more. But no, what I should do is work on some of those raglan increased sweaters that I have on the hook. And then I can have my stitch markers back because a bunch of them are currently being held hostage in those project bags behind me. So maybe one of these days I'll get around to that. I think that is everything for today. Keep an eye on the channel. Content will be sporadic. I will try my best to at least get out of Sunday Sunrise every week and hopefully this week this video and something else. I reopened my Etsy shop. I did not add any new bags, but there are a whole bunch of super cute ones from the last two updates that are still available. So totally go check that out. The link is in the description below. And if you follow me on Instagram at hook by happenstance, I will probably let you know there if I do put out an update. It'll be sometime this month, maybe. We'll see. The whole scattered thing again. Anyways, I hope that you all are having an okay week, and I will see you next time. Bye!